Week six of the 2024 NFL season is upon us. And at this point, man, we all doing the same damn thing. We're all doing the same damn thing. We're chasing usage and opportunity, especially at the receiver and tight end position because it has been a wild season. Quarterbacks, receivers going down. We are just looking for guys who truly have an opportunity to score some damn fantasy points on our roster. And you come to the right place because we have developed and designed and perfected a tool that's the best in the space that gives you a quick snapshot, a visual representation of all them dope stats, all those dope metrics that you look at and you're like, how the hell does this equate to anything? What do I do with this? We made it very easy. We took all of the stuff that you love, put it into one score to show you how teams are being asked or how teams are asking these pass catchers to be deployed and used on Sundays and therefore how we can predict and project how they might score some fantasy points here in week six and beyond. Now, a lot of y'all know the boy wasn't supposed to be here doing this show this week. My wife and I took our two boys down to Orlando, Florida to surprise our youngest on his fifth birthday with a trip to Disney World. Hurricane Milton had other plans for not just myself, but everybody that lives and resides down there. So as we get into this show today, I know a lot of y'all check out DD Fantasy Football. Y'all rock with the community. I'll tap into this show and this channel. So if you live in Florida, you got family, friends, relatives, anybody that's been affected by the hurricane down in Florida, I hope, I hope this show can bring you just a sliver, a little bit of relief, a little bit of entertainment for a very real situation that y'all got going on down there. So as we roll into this one, Florida, this Trinity episode, week six, this show, this is for y'all. Welcome back to the station. Welcome back to the channel. Again, if you stick around to the end of the video and you find the information actionable and or entertaining, do one thing, subscribe, 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 turn the notifications on, engage in the comments. Let me know what you're looking forward to seeing here in week six, but let's pull it up. Let's talk about some overperformers, some guys that balled the hell out here in week five, and we're not going to pull up any box scores. We're just going to pull up the Trinity because it's going to tell us everything we need to know. Week five. 2024 NFL season, here it is, and there's no need for me to be on the screen. Don't worry about that. But the leaders in week five in wide receiver usage, take a look at that. Brandon Ayuk leading the way, 9.49. We talked about Brandon Ayuk multiple times the first three weeks of the season, not being concerned, not being concerned, not being concerned. And finally, when we're like, we're concerned, it's four weeks in. The very next week, that usage spikes and he absolutely dominates. And what you love about uh, this chart and seeing Ayuk on here is, I mean, he he did, it wasn't an over-expectation type performance. Like Jamar Chase up here led the way with 40-plus fantasy points on the week in week five, 9.24. I mean, uh, way above the trend line. This is this is an outlier-ish type performance, not the norm. And we know Jamar Chase went absolutely nuclear. But Brandon Ayuk, this is why for the first four weeks, we're like, hey, he's still inside of that wide receiver three-tier threshold. He's still being used in the offense, just not as much as Juwan Jennings or Debo Samuel. And when you just take a look at San Francisco in week five, I mean, they completely flipped the script. Here goes Brandon Ayuk. You've got Debo George Kittle up here, and then Juwan Jennings and Debo Samuel um, much further down the list. It was all Brandon Ayuk in week five for the San Francisco 49ers. Good for Brandon Ayuk, and this is why you just got to, if they're inside of this purple line, they're being used in a way where they should be in your lineup every single week, and hopefully he was in your lineup not as your primary one, but you got big-time production out of Brandon Ayuk. We talked about Jamar Chase. This was a player I was on the show Underdog ranking show with Josh Norris. And I told people, hey, my wide receiver one going into week five was Jamar Chase. And he performed and gave us wide receiver one overall type production. Went absolutely nuclear. You see the progression, the usage starting to take shape. But what was interesting was T. Higgins really getting involved in this offense. I know a lot of people are kind of like, man, what the hell do you do with T. Higgins week in and week out? But one of the highest usage scores on the week, 7.84, gave us 29 points. We knew that the Cincinnati Bengals could throw on that very, very pass funnel heavy defense of the Baltimore Ravens, and they did just that. Both of those guys smashed. DJ Moore got in the mix. 8.93 Trinity score on week five. They got him involved early and often. And the higher this is and tighter to the line, the better, because that's more normal, you know, with the usage. So still 
producing a little bit above, which there's nothing wrong with that. DJ Moore getting back in the mix. This is very good for our Chicago Bears. DJ Moore shares. You also have Darius Slayton, who just stepped in and assumed that Malik Neighbors' role. A lot of people thought it could be Wondell Robinson, who was also fed as well. But Darius Slayton, 8.92 score, usage score in the week, one of the highest, and he delivered with 26 fantasy points. One of the underproducers, Terry McLaurin, as good as Jaden Daniels is, tried to get Terry McLaurin involved in the offense, got us about 13 fantasy points, 9.16, very good usage score for Terry McLaurin. I love what's been happening over the past three weeks in Washington with McLaurin. Some other underproducers, Justin Jefferson, only 15 points in that London matchup. Knew it was going to be a little difficult all off schedule. Still utilized at an elite clip, 8.75. Down here, Amari Cooper, we talked about Coop. The usage was there inside that Browns offense. The problem is the Browns offense is putrid, so it did not amount to much. Ten fantasy points from Amari Cooper and Jaden Reed. I mean, it started off with a bang down the field with that big throw, and then after that, it just, you know, there wasn't a ton from Jaden Reed in that matchup. Some of the other players who produced, Brock Bowers, we're not going to talk about the tight end position, but Brock Bowers absolutely dominating, showing why he was the top 15 pick in the draft. You got Darius Slayton right here. Juju Smith-Schuster, who we will talk about today in this show. Garrett Wilson, talked about him on the show with Josh on Underdog, Josh and Hayden's channel. It's like last week for Garrett Wilson. Get the shit done. He was absolutely peppered. 22 targets, scored you 30 fantasy points, 29 fantasy points, 8.33 usage score. All I'm saying is with 22 targets, you give Jamar Chase 22 targets, uh, he's, he's probably way off of the screen. So great for Garrett Wilson. I have no clue what to expect from this offense moving forward, but Garrett Wilson is the primary target earner, so you fire him up every single week. Drake London talked about him back-to-back -back weeks, and look what happened. When you trust the Trinity, this here's what happens. Drake London. Ah, there's going to be weeks where they flip-flop. Absolutely. But there are also going to be weeks where they both simultaneously smash and deliver. Drake London, 7.90, still asked to do more wide receiver shit. And Atlanta's offense, hence the reason why he's the one. But Darnell Mooney, I mean, still 31 points from Darnell Mooney on 7.29 score. So this is just a great offense where you want both of those pass catchers. A couple of other names inside the elite tier. You see George Kittle in there. We talked a little bit about T. Higgins. There's Rashid Shahid who popped up on the injury report. And Zay Flowers worked his way back up the chart here in week five. Now we have to look ahead. To week six, what are some players that are on my radar who I'm very curious and interested in tracking and who I think could be big-time booms for us here in week six and beyond? And the first name, no doubt about it, in my opinion, we've talked about him on this channel multiple times, Brian Thomas Jr., BTJ and the Jacksonville Jaguars. His usage right now in week five, we know he had the big 85-yard touchdown play, but it, it, it was a lot more than just that big 85-yard touchdown play. And we're going to take a look at some of BTJ's film, but let's go to the tracker and pull up Jacksonville Jaguars here in Week 5. There goes Brian Thomas Jr. Score 8.46. Usage score gave us 23 points. Followed up by, who's this? Christian Kirk. There's Christian Kirk, 7.15, a little below. The trend line should have scored us a little more than he gave us. Way back here, you've got Gabe Davis, who, again, is the third, fourth, fifth primary option in this offense. Brenton Strange still holding strong here, but really just want to focus on Brian Thomas Jr. Now, this is only filtered for week five, but when we look at the Jacksonville Jaguars for the entire season, I mean, he is giving you the type of usage and scoring you the type of points that historically, based on Trinity, you want your wide receiver ones, your kind of high-end usage guys to be about a 7.5 and above, and Brian Thomas is right there in that 7.4, 7 7.5 wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver one usage type range. Now, just because you're used that way does not necessarily mean the fantasy points are always going to follow. You have to look at QB efficiency, what's going on in the offense, but the way that BTJ is being used right now in Jacksonville, there's no doubt about it, he's the one. You start him, fire him up every single week. We've talked about that, Ben been on that longer than a lot of people, but the data, the usage is backing it up. And when you look at the tape, let's pull it up. Here's the tape right here from last Sunday of, of Brian Thomas Jr. Right here, just getting him the ball quickly, a little screen play. So from a Trinity perspective, that doesn't do a ton. You know, he got the target, picked up some yards, 
but it's how they want to use them all over the field. Here's the long play, right? Looks like a little bit of lapse in coverage. And then there's that 4-3 speed for Brian Thomas to get down the field and score those big plays. Again, at the bottom of the screen, beautiful route. It's probably my favorite play from BTJ, BTJ from this game. That just deep hit, that deep hitch route. Watch him threaten the defensive back upfield, get the DB turning his hips. He stops on a dime, turn around. There you go. Pick up that, pick up that yardage on that hitch route. Those hog routes. Hitch, outs, goes. That what's that's what scores fantasy points historically the most. You want your receivers running hitch routes, out routes, and go routes. BTJ doing a little bit of everything right here in the middle of the field. First read for Trevor Lawrence. You just see them continuing to try to feed this young man the ball. And right here, Illid, after this play right here, another in-breaking in route across the center of the field. But an ill is a throw right here from Trevor Lawrence down the field into triple coverage. But you can see how they want to get Brian Thomas involved in this offense early. I do not believe anything about this usage is fraudulent, fake. I 1,000% trust the Trinity with Brian Thomas Jr. being the primary option in Jacksonville. Now, there could be weeks where Gabe Davis has two touchdowns, blow up week, Christian Kirk should get in the zone, and Kirk is still being used in a range where he's not chopped liver. 6.26, he's scoring you close to 10.5 fantasy points per game below the trend line. There's some more room for Christian Kirk to do a little bit more than what he has, but historically, this is just where Christian Kirk kind of lives. This is what he's asked to do. This is what he does. Brian Thomas Jr. is the play. He's been the play since week one. And I 1,000% trust the Trinity on BTJ's usage and what he's doing in this offense. You should as well. Let's talk about another player, another interesting, I don't want to say a deep cut, but he's he's not the primary option on his team, unlike Brian Thomas Jr. and some of these other guys that we might talk about. But there aren't a lot of other guys. Now, there is a player, Zay Jones, coming off a of suspension. But the player that I want to talk about here is Michael Wilson of the Arizona Cardinal. Now, make no mistake about it. This is not... Michael Wilson over Marvin Harrison Jr. That ain't what we're doing. That's not what we're talking about. It's still Marv. But, but Michael Wilson is being used in a way where I think a lot of people, uh, th there could be an opportunity for you to acquire Michael Wilson on the low or trade a player who's got more value tier down to a Michael Wilson and probably get close to the same type of production that you're getting from that more valuable player. Let's look at the Arizona Cardinals. Weeks one through five, they're leaders in usage for the Arizona Cardinals. And quick tip, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you just want to filter by a position here, all you got to do is cross out receiver, and then it will just show your tight ends like that. Just click the name receivers. If you click tight ends, nothing pops up. Or you could take the tight ends off and just look at the wide receiver position. But for here, let's put everything up on the screen. So this is how the pass catchers, uh, absent running backs, are being utilized for the Cardinals. Here you go, leading the way. Marvin Harrison Jr., 6.99 Trinity score, 13.7 fantasy points per game. Trey McBride, 6.79, great usage score for the tight end position, 10.88 fantasy points per game. And then third, Michael Wilson, 6.05, 8.92 fantasy points per game. That's weeks one through five, the past two games. We just look at this, weeks three, four, and five, past three games. Week three, week four, week five, past three games. Michael Wilson, 8.12 usage score, Trinity score, 10.67 fantasy points per game. Marvin Harrison, 7.82, scoring you more, 12.83 fantasy points per game. So just from a usage standpoint, what they're being asked to do on their team, their first read target share, their first downs, their yards per route run, all of that stuff, over the last three games, Michael Wilson is right on par with what Marvin Harrison Jr. is doing. They're two points apart in a point-per-game perspective, this lets me know that there is opportunity and point-scoring potential in a player who may not be as valuable because he's opposite Marvin Harrison Jr. When you look at Michael Wilson and how he was utilized in Week 5, I mean, he was getting downfield stuff. Kyler missed him on a beautiful double move down the sideline. Matter of fact, let's just pull up the tape. Let's pull up the Michael Wilson tape. Here we go. Mike Dub, Week 5 against the 49ers. Bottom of the screen. There he is screaming down the field. Deep crossing play. Nice concept right there. Clear out with Marv. Big play for Michael Wilson. So you like to see him on those deep routes. Air yards, very important in that usage score. Here he is again. A deep out, right? Love it. Outs, hitches, goes. There goes Michael Wilson on a nice out route. Here he is at the top of the screen. He's at the top of the screen on this play right here. 
Just a nice, simple play. Get him the ball. Let the playmaker do something after the catch. Here he is again. Bottom of the screen. Top of the screen. Quick little hitch route. Just get him the ball. Let him pick up a first down. Bottom of the screen. In the slot. Another quick speed out. Doesn't quite do a lot on that one, but out routes. You want to see it. And then here at the top of the screen, you're going to see him run. Boom. A stop. Go. Right down the sideline. And Kyler Murray just misses him for what would have been a big, big gain on the play. So when you just look at how he's been used and, and the things that he's being asked to do in conjunction with what Marvin Harrison Jr. is not doing, which he's not commanding 15, 16, 17 targets a game. He's not catching 10, 11, 12 passes every single week. Kyler Murray's kind of spreading this ball around. So it's not an anti-Marv take. Marv is still being asked to do more. But when you look at what Michael Wilson has been asked to do over the past couple of weeks, it might be some opportunity if he continues to be utilized like this. And think about Brandon Ayuk, y'all. When you keep being utilized in advantageous ways, all it takes is the right game script and the right situation for you to go from down here to just, I'm just saying, get get to the, the median level, right? Get to the trend line. But if they do above and beyond that, you've got the opportunity for a player to score a ton of points instead of banking on, you know, an underutilized player going absolutely nuclear on minimal targets, minimal looks. That is what this tool allows you to do in a very simple, clean, easy way. Very curious to see how Michael Wilson performs here in week five, uh, week six. And uh, yeah, trust the Trinity. The usage is there. Michael Wilson, let's see what pops off here in week six for the Arizona Cardinals, second year wide receiver. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun now because I know nobody believed in the big plays the first couple of weeks and then he went quiet middle of the season. But right now, there's a lot of opportunity available in Indianapolis. And yes, I am talking about a wake up favorite, Alec Antoine Pierce. We call him Antoine on the show. And when you got a white boy that can run like this, your middle name is Antoine. Alec Pierce getting down the field, scoring big, big fantasy points for us if you played him or if you participate in best ball. But looking at week six, Michael, Michael Pittman Jr. out. Josh Downs looking and trending like he's not going to play. And Jonathan Taylor still very much banged up. So we got to talk about Pierce. Let's take a look at what he's done so far. Now this offense, y'all. We know it is like a tale of two offenses, one with Anthony Richardson, one with Joe Flacco. Leading the way in usage for the Indianapolis Colts, Josh Downs. When he's on the field, he has done more and scored more on a per-target basis than anybody else on this roster. When Josh Downs is on the field, he's giving you about 6.78 Trinity worth of usage, yielding 14.5 fantasy points per game. Followed by Michael Pittman, 6.5, 10.3 fantasy points per game. We know Pittman is out. Downs trending towards out. Then right here, this is for the entire season, got Alec Pierce, 5.96 score, 13.5 fantasy points per game. You move down the line a little bit more. You got Adnan Mitchell, 3.12. So no tight ends in the mix, right? We take out the wide receivers. L look at how awful the usage has been for the tight end. So if you're rostering Mo Ali Cox and Drew Ogletree, Kylan Granson, it is just a muddled mess of not even mid, just below mid, just awful. You, you, you don't want these guys. Let's, let's put the wide receivers back on the screen. We know the top two guys are out, so everybody's opportunity should slide forward some. But Alec Pierce is the one that I really, really want to focus in on because what I do not believe is going to happen is Adnan Mitchell is going to step in and do everything that Michael Pittman or Josh Downs were asked to do. It's probably going to be... A combination of Ashton Doolin, Adnan Mitchell should have an opportunity to do a little bit more this week as well. But Alec Pierce is the real focal point because he does something very well. And it's one of those things that when you look at any utilization tool, air yards is an important component in it because all it takes is one. All it takes is two or three to get you what you need, right? You know, sometimes hey, we don't got to go all night. If you got yours early, I get mine or we don't got to go all night. Now, Alec Pierce, he ain't got to go all night. He can get you where you need to go real quick, real fast. And it works out very well when he does hit. So let's pull up that Trinity and look at Alec Pierce a little, again, right? Over the past three games, let's just see what's been going on in this offense. Here goes Michael Pittman right there, 7.08 over the last three games. You've got Josh Downs when he's on the field, 6.78. 
right there, hovering right there, is Alec Pierce. I want to pull up Alec Pierce's game log to just take a look at this, right? Uh, three targets, two targets, two targets. Week two versus the Packers, he had his highest output, seven targets, five receptions, 56 yards, scored a touchdown. And then versus the Texans, three targets, uh, one touchdown, 125 yards. Last week versus the Jags, three for three, 134 and a touchdown. Almost had two, and we'll pull up the film. I just look at this, and and I look at his score and his usage and say, you know what? Despite what I think about Alec Pierce and what he can be long-term and all of this, when they throw him the ball, good shit happens. Like, when they throw Alec Pierce the ball downfield, which the Colts do more than any other team in the league, Anthony Richardson or Joe Flacco, the average depth of target, is way down the field. They are launching it down the field. And when they aim it at Alec Pierce, normally good things happen. He's running a ton of routes. So when you've got this situation where they don't use the tight end, there is no Michael Pittman Jr., Jonathan Taylor and Trey Sermon banged up, Josh Downs probably out, and you got a rookie wide receiver who does not have everything figured out, I don't really care if it's Anthony Richardson or Joe Flacco. I'm not here to say that Alec Pierce is going to be the second coming of anything special or unique. But in this offense, when he's throwing the ball downfield, great stuff happens. You know, watch the tape. Here he is at the bottom of the screen. Bottom of the screen, it's going to be a, a Herculean effort here. But this deep, deep out route gets the hand up, makes an insanely acrobatic catch. But he's doing it, right? He's getting trusted. They throw him jump balls. Here's what happens. Right off the line of scrimmage, look at this screaming down. Just absolutely splits the defensive back and the safety. We got to run that back. Look at this. Right off the line, boom, safety cheats. I'm not worried about Alec Pierce. I know I'm in cover two. Didn't do my job, and he would get abused again, number five. Because, again, underestimates the speed. Look at this. Looks like they're supposed to be in a cover three. Cornerback and safety bite up on the flat route, leaving number five, the free. Looks like he's supposed to have middle third. One-on-one -on -one with Pierce. Looks like he's got an angle. Takes a bad decision. And there's the Hezzy to the crib. Alec Pierce, his downfield ability, all it takes is three. He doesn't need 22 targets. If Anthony Richardson can bomb it down there, Joe Flacco can bomb it down there, he's already shown an ability to convert, to catch those high-leverage targets. I'm going to trust it this week with Alec Pierce. I would be starting him over quite a few wide receivers on the week. We will see how this thing plays out versus a very difficult Titans defense. But no downs, no Sermon potentially, no Jonathan Taylor, no Michael Pittman. I'm going to trust that Alec Pierce get down the field. Give me a big play on your five targets. I'm with it. Alec Pierce trusting the Trinity here in week six. Let's talk about one of my boys from Dallas. Dallas Cowboys wide receiver, not C.D. Lamb. Jalen Tolbert caught the game winning touchdown pass versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Got to see that on Sunday night football. Jalen Tolbert, second wide receiver up with no Brandon Cooks, Dak Prescott. Is this thing for real? Is the Jalen Tolbert experience for real? Or is this a little bit of a blip? But let's not guess. Let's pull it up. Let's talk about it. Trinity for the Dallas Cowboys here in 2024. Y'all know who's at the top. is CeeDee Lamb leading the way with a 7.21, scoring you 15 fantasy points per game. And this is not why we drafted CeeDee Lamb. And we'll talk about that quickly. Jake Ferg, second utilized pass catcher in that offense, 11 points per game, close to six, which is great for the tight end position. And you got Jalen Tolbert for the entire season, 5.28, 11 fantasy points per game. Great, considering he didn't do anything for us in 2023. Uh, this, is, this is really good. Brandon Cooks is out. There's nobody behind him. There's, there's, there's nobody. I'm, I'm not worried about Kevante Turpin and Ryan Flournoy, Luke Schoonmaker. It is truly CeeDee Lamb. It is Jake Ferguson. And now we insert Jalen Tolbert. Now let's talk about CeeDee Real quick, because I know a lot of people are panicked about C.D. Lamb. Ah, he's not scoring us all these points. The tool doesn't just help you in season. It's predictive. It correlates at a, like, 61% rate. Trinity score this year versus next year. Well, let's just take a look at 2023. Let's look at where C.D. Lamb was tracking through the first five weeks. So right now, a lot of people disappointed. 7.21. He's not getting all the targets. He's not being asked to do some of the things that I feel like he did all of last season. Well... He didn't all of last year. Let's go back weeks one through five of the 2023 season. And CeeDee Lamb, right about where he is right now. 7.33, 14.18 fantasy points per game. And if we just go week six to week 17, right, he's tracking exactly where he is 
at this same time last year, and then we go week six through seventeen, he went all, he went bonkers. 8.34, 26, 27 damn fantasy points per game. So when we look at the 2024 season, I know right now CeeDee Lamb ain't giving us what we thought he would. I am not worried. He's still leading the way in usage. There's CeeDee Lamb, 721. But Jalen Tolbert is who we're here to talk about. Is this for real? Let's pull up the film and take a look at how Dallas was using Jalen Tolbert. And then I'm going to let y'all answer the question. I'm going to let y'all answer the question. Are you going to trust it or not? Let me know in the comments. So pull up the tape and look at what Jalen Tolbert did versus Pittsburgh. As Dak Prescott says, here we go. Tolbert, top of the screen. He's about to get a bomb. 48 yards, right? Looks like a bust in coverage. Cornerback doesn't carry. Safety doesn't get over. There it is. 48 yards later, Jalen Tolbert is down the field. Dak, clean pocket. You see it from the back angle. Safety late getting over. Whole shot. Big chunk play. A lot of yards, a lot of points on that play. Jalen Tolbert, bottom of the screen. Hey, right there. Just hit him with a little crosser route. All right, sit down, sit in the middle. There he is, bottom of the screen, stop route, little hitch. There it is, catching the ball. You, know, you want to see him be utilized in creative ways. Here he is at the top of the screen. This is an interception, little separation, DB all over that, nothing happening from Jalen Tober. Those are a few of his targets. When I look at it, he does not, he's not an explosive athlete. He's not a dynamic playmaker. I don't think he's any second coming of anything special, nor do I think Jalen Tober should stop the Dallas Cowboys from significantly investing in that position in the 2025 NFL Draft. But for the 2024 season right now, when we look at what's happening in Dallas, they have nobody else, folks. They've got nobody else. It's CeeDee Lamb, it's Jake Ferguson, and yes, I am going to trust wide receiver three flex-type usage with Jalen Tolbert. And he may have that week, like he did in week five, or he scores you a touchdown, he strikes the big play, hits that joint, and he looks like he had a monster performance. But even with the 7.4, it, it doesn't put you into this high-end usage range. And when I see where CeeDee Lamb and Jake Ferguson were on the week, I, I would fully expect this to flip-flop moving forward. I do think Jalen Tolbert is a fine flex play moving forward, especially with Brandon Cooks off the field. When he comes back, we'll reassess this wide receiver situation. But right now, yeah, trust it. Wide receiver three, flex play, Jalen Tolbert, fire him up. They ain't got nobody else. Now, the final player we're going to take a look at is somebody that we talked about. If you go back to last Monday's Wake Up with Ray and Jay episode, I said, I think the wide receiver that's probably going to be the one to roster is Juju. I do not believe that they're going to ask Xavier Worthy to do the same type of shit that Rasheed Rice was doing, nor is it Sky Moore. They went back and literally got the guy who was there and Rasheed Rice replaced to be in the Juju slash Rasheed Rice role, Juju Smith-Schuster, who had a monster performance out of nowhere for a lot of people on Monday night. And I think of all the situations, all of the usage that we talked about, this one, this one looks on film very, very real. So let's take a look at Juju's Trinity score on the week. Let's pull up the tracker and get to week five. Talk a little Trinity with Kansas City. And Juju, week five, here we go. Kansas City, he led the way. 8.68, gave us 20 fantasy points. Usage was there. The points followed. Great stuff from Juju. Travis Kelsey, 16 points, used a lot. 7.84 is banana land for the tight end position. And you see, still below. If you're a receiver doing that, you should be scoring a little more than 16 points. This is great for Travis Kelsey. Bullish usage with the absence of Rasheed Rice. Uh, he's going to be involved all year. I'm not going to say this is going to be Juju every single week, but this should be Travis Kelsey, if not more, every single week. McCole Hardman, third in usage, not Xavier Worthy. 4.21 for McCole Hardman. You've got Noah Gray, 3.47, five fantasy points. Xavier Worthy got you 12. We know a lot of that was on that rushing touchdown. 3.24, so he wasn't even asked to do a ton at all, even in the absence of Rasheed Rice. Now, let's look at these players for the entirety of the season, and even with that big juju week, he's got some he's got some stuff to make up, right? Weeks one through five, one through four didn't do damn near anything besides drop touchdowns, and in week five, he went off. But let's talk about 
Matter of fact, we don't need to talk about it. Let's pull it up and look at that Juju Smith-Schuster usage from week five. Let's pull it up right now. And this is what I'm doing with all these players. When I'm looking at the Trinity, I'm going to check out how these teams are using them. And, and you see right here, this is a first read. This is a play for Juju. It's an extended run play, little RPO action, get it out quick, hit Juju. Juju's going to motion in. Mahomes gets a look at the coverage. Boom. Fake the chip block. Hit him with a beautifully executed screen right there. And he's doing Rasheed Rice type plays. This was a great setup. Juju Smith Schuster after the catch. We know he's very good in that department. Here he is again. Bottom of the screen. Mahomes, this was not his first read, but Juju, veteran that he ends, find the soft spot in the zone. Picks up chunk plays. Air yards, first downs is good. Here he is. Juju at the top of the screen. Mahomes scramble, Jill. Juju keeps it alive. Great catch. Toe tap on the sideline. And when you continue to be utilized in creative ways, this was a clear out. This was a play to get Juju Smith-Schuster the ball. Top of the screen coming across the field on the crossing route. You got Worthy screaming down the seam. Kelsey also running a post, clearing away for Juju to pick up yards after the catch. And then he had a dope sliding grab right here, working his way across the field. You know Mahomes is going to keep the play alive. Great grab by Juju. Now, he did have one clank off his hands for an interception, but neither here nor there. The usage for Juju was there, and he felt very much like the replacement for Rasheed Rice. And we know Juju, back in 2023, let's, let's, let's just pull it up. He's been here with Patrick Mahomes in 2022. So let's go back to 2022 and just take a look at Kansas City. Let's take a look at Juju. We don't even need to pull up Kansas City. We'll go weeks 1 through 17 with Mahomes. He was close to like 1,000 yards on the season. Just pull up Juju. And this is one of the things that I love to do. Just go back and see how players were utilized in the past with, with similar quarterbacks, different situations. Let's pull it up. So back in 2022, Juju for the season had a 5.45 score, 11.85 fantasy points per game. I believe this was the first season post Tyreek Hill. And he had stretches in this in this year where he was uh he was a monster. So he's got some familiarity with Mahomes. You see him have a start worthy score back in 2022. And you look at just the usage from last week, which we do not think that's going to happen every week for Juju Smith-Schuster. But I do believe that from the wide receiver group, uh, he will probably lead the way in usage every single week. Is that going to yield uh, 130 yards on seven receptions? No touchdowns? Probably not. Wouldn't bet on that every single week. But until Xavier Worthy gets gets more experience in the league, I, I do not believe that he is going to be the primary target. And here's the here's the beautiful part about Trinity. Um, we, we don't even really have to guess and what I think and what I believe. The team said the first week without Rasheed Rice, you're going to do bare minimum from a wide receiver standpoint. We'll get you involved in the offense. You scored us a touchdown. But the actual shit, the targets, the yak, the yards per route, we're not going to ask you to do a lot of that. We're going to trust the veteran. And I am going to trust the Trinity, as should you. Juju Smith-Schuster, Alec Pierce, BTJ, Brian Thomas Jr., Michael Wilson, maybe a deep cut for a teardown. Y'all know Jalen Tolbert and those Dallas Cowboys. Ain't got nobody else. It's Tolbert, CeeDee Lamb, Jake Fur. If you want to use this tool, very simple. Go to ddfantasyfootball.com. Sign up. $9. You can track all the usage, all the opportunity, all the shit that we love. Very clean, very simple, very easy. Wide receiver usage and opportunity. If you stuck around to the end of the video and you found the information actionable and are entertaining, subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button, like the content. As always, trust the Trinity. We got dope content coming out uh, the next couple of days. I will be doing a start of the week video. So make sure you pull up my start of the week that will be posted probably on Saturday. And then following Saturday as we head into Sunday and Sunday night. Yes, it's time to talk a little college again. This time, just the QBs. QB stock watch. We're going to talk Shadour, Carson Beck, Cam Ward, Jalen Milrow, all those 2025 quarterbacks and the hype and the steam that some of them are receiving or are not getting at this moment. Again, appreciate y'all being here. Give me a little bit of your time. Y'all enjoy week six. Trust the Trinity. Go to ddfantasyfootball.com to get in on it. Join the best community on the fantasy football planet. I'm out. Ace.